Jeremy Putzano, who over. is what a world champion in golf, right? Yeah, we just got back from Japan, actually. Did you really? Yeah. Now, was Japan another world championship? It was. It was the 2016 world championship. And yeah. you won the 2010 yes. world championship. So it's been six years, yeah. Wow. And what would you do this time? We won our you B2 won it again. Cycle. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're really pumped. And your dad is here with you. My dad is here, Leo, the guide. He, he does all the work. I get, I get all the credit. I like that. I remember the last time we chatted, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. You talked about, well, first of all, like you, you lose your sight. Were you sophomore or I was so a sophomore at San Diego college. State? Yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden, just vision disappears. Yeah. Is it gradual or it's pretty a, much? It's a rapid onset of blindness. I lost my central vision in a matter of two months at 19. So I remember you, you saying that you lose a central vision so you can sort of see the, around the periphery. Exactly. But in the center, there's nothing. Exactly. I tell people my vision's similar to a donut if they put their hands in front of their face. Yes. That's what my vision's like at all times. I have the donut, right? I have the top, the sides, the bottom. I'm missing what the donut's missing. I have you're no missing center. the center part. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, Leo, when your son was, lost his sight, that's a very traumatic time for the family. How did you guys deal with that? Um, it, it, it was tough because that's definitely not something that you want for your kids. Right. Um, it was really hard at the beginning because he was depressed and everything. But then when he starts getting better, all of a sudden, then we're getting better because, you know, we basically follow his, his mood. And uh, right. for some reason, something happened. He started coming back and, and, you know, getting out of the depression and everything was good. Now he's, he's a very happy uh, I was going to say young man. He's actually a, you know, very happy guy now. So it's very easy. But he was he was very hard. You and, don't expect that. And how important was sport? Did you did you see a change in Jeremy when he first cycling? Right? Was it cycling? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Did you see a change in Jeremy once he realized he could still be an athlete again? It, it was funny yeah, because uh, I actually it happened at Thanksgiving, and I actually had a set of golf clubs for him for yeah. Christmas. Yes. I give it to him, and he basically said, "What am I going to do with it?" And then. A couple of months later or something, you say, well, let's try him. And, and then when he started, you know, to hit the ball and realized, I actually can hit it. Yes. Then you could see a smile on his face like, oh, yeah, great. You know, I'm, I can actually still play golf. And now, had, had Jeremy, did, uh, yeah, you can grab that mic. Yeah. Did you, were you a golfer when you were like in grammar school, high school? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, my parents met working in the golf industry. Oh, interesting. He worked in the golf industry for 30 years. And I played with him every Sunday from when I was 12 till I was 17 till I graduated from high school. Yeah. I played three years varsity in high school. That was my main sport. So after losing my sight, I thought golf is very visual. Yes. As a, as a legally blind individual, I'm, I'm not going to play golf ever again. Well, you know what's interesting, and I think I told you this story, one of my closest friends is a blind uh, entertainer named Tom Sullivan. Yeah, he was at the most recent national championship with yeah. us. Yes. We saw and him there. Tom's a very good friend. Great guy. And he actually challenged Jack Nicklaus right. to, play, uh, to play for $100,000. And Jack was like, I can't play with you. You're, you're, you're blind. He goes, well we're going to tee off at one in the morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a smart man, <laughs> Tom is. Tom is a very smart man. Great guy. Getting back into golf again, the, the nice thing about that is the relationship, you get to spend more time with your dad yeah. than you probably ever did before. Absolutely. I think in going through losing my sight at 19, I was, I was growing up thinking we all had to be independent to be right. successful. Yeah. And losing my central vision, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm now dependent. I'm going to be dependent on others for the rest of my life. Yes. And that's what got me into that depression. But I started to find out further on down the road that there's this beauty of interdependence where we can work together as a team. And I'm not really dependent on him as much. We're interdependently working together. He's helping me on the shop, but he's getting purpose as well. And we sure. have a deeper relationship. So there's so much fun and power to that. When you guys went to England in 2010. Yeah. And was that your first world championship? It, that you were The was. first time you were the world championship. Yeah. It sounds like the bond grew throughout yeah. those rounds, oh, right? Yeah. And you end up winning, I think, chipping in yeah, on absolutely. the last hole. Or in, something. A in a playoff. Yeah. In a playoff. You Even chipped crazier. in a playoff. Yeah, it was unreal. How special was that in terms of the bond it created? It's something you and your dad will have forever. Yeah, it was the coolest experience of my entire life. It was something. It was it was a dream. It's something that you would write up and say, "No, that's that's not going to happen." That sounds like a movie to me. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to play so dad? Cool. I think we'll have. Oh, I don't know, George Robert Clooney. De Niro. Yeah, yeah we're George all Clooney. That's we all we got. Yeah, we're good so, with that. So, Leo, what, what did you think uh, that whole? experience of guiding your son in a world championship that's a lot of pressure it is i mean it's you know and it 
okay, you're a caddy for somebody you don't know, whatever, it's one thing, yeah. but for your son, you want <laughs> you want good results, so sure. there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. You've got to read the greens, you've got well, to yeah. read the shot, you've yeah. got a feet, foot position, everything. Oh, so. I mean, I line him up, and then after I, he hits the ball, I have to tell him where it goes, but I still have to stay positive, so, right. you know, I mean, it's... It's practice. We it's been evolving. Uh, yes. I remember at the beginning, I used to tell him everything on the course. You know, there's right. water here, and after that, I said, "Well, you know, there's a perks of being blind. I don't need to know all these things. All <laughs> don't I tell me about the hazards. Yes. You know." Yeah. So now I just tell him where to hit. You know, we decide on the club. He hits the shot. Tell him where it goes, and on the putts, same thing. You know, read the greens and everything. It's yeah, and, and you know, we we keep talking about it. How can we make it better? How can right. the communication be better and everything? But it's it's getting there. We're we're doing good. Well, so talk a little bit about you. You guys just got back from winning the 2016 event. And that was where was that at? That was in Japan. In Japan. Yeah. What was that experience like? It was awesome. I mean, since winning the Worlds in 2010, it was kind of like, okay, wow, um, this was our first Worlds. We won. Uh, no one knew who we were, so right. we started to get more well known as we went to other tournaments. So in 2012 in Canada, we finished second, but definitely had a lot more pressure on us. 2014 was Australia, didn't perform as well. Yes. And then we came to Japan and you know really practiced hard, not only on the, the golf aspect, but our team dynamic uh, and, and took home the B2 championship. So we brought our trophy with I us. I love the trophy, look yeah. at that. That is unbelievable. Yeah, we're stuck. So how did CAF help you out? Oh my gosh, in so many different ways. I, I was, after losing my sight, I had a tough time finding meaning in my life uh, and finding purpose. Uh, I felt like everything that I loved to do when I could see was gone. Yeah. Uh, that feeling of dependence and just a total loss. CAF with the grants helped provide me the opportunity to pursue sports that I loved when I could see. And so it brought normalcy to my life that I didn't have for a long time. And it gave me something to look forward to. If I was having a tough day in March, a tough week in April, I would say, you know what, I have a tournament in September to actually look forward to. When in that time, when I lost my sight, I had barely anything to look forward to. And that's what gave me the normalcy and the ability to say, hey, I have purpose in my life and an identity that I can really enjoy. So when, when you look at your two world championships, yeah. um, when did you get a feel for, you know what, I think I could be, you know, I was a good golfer before, but right. I could be really good yeah. in, in this golf. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of when I played in high school golf here in San Diego where there's a lot of good golfers. Yeah. I was a middle-of-the-pack golfer. Sure. And you have to be a good golfer to be middle-of-the-pack golfer. But now, after losing my sight, we play in our first blind golf tournament and finish third, something like that. And You're then like, win, exactly win the world. And all of a sudden, okay, we're, we're a contender here in, in the entire world. And that's something that's so fun to go out there, perform as a team because golf is an individual sport, right. but Hey, I've got my dad here and we go to Japan together and all these different places <laughs> to play a sport that we both love. It's, it's an unbelievable experience, and I hope that it can inspire others to go out and do what they want to do and also just say thank you for everybody who donates to CAF because it truly changes thousands of challenged athletes' lives around the world, not just mine. And there's the tangible things of seeing that we won the trophy. Sure. But there's intangible things, the emotional aspect that it psychologically helped me in ways that I can't even explain where I was in such a rut for so long you can tell I'm in a happy place now and how I talk about these the power things. of sport. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And yeah. being an athlete my whole life, uh, it, it makes you whole understand. again. Ab I remember one arm Willie was looking at his picture right there. He said, you know, sport makes me whole. Yeah, absolutely. It allows me to be me and absolutely. go out there and, and challenge myself on a, on a daily basis. Oh yeah. So how much has you won in 2010 and yep. you win again in 2016? I'm imagining the competition has gotten even tougher. It has. That, that it's gotten deeper because yeah. more and again people don't know what's out there right they don't know what they don't know now more and more people who are visually impaired are finding out when yeah. i can play golf yeah did you find that that the competition is even more intense than it was six years ago not only is it getting more intense you're getting more young guns like myself <laughs> uh, right it was uh the two i was between really myself and a guy from canada yeah. who was in his low 30s and that's what's really fun is there's and there was also a, a young man from scotland who was yes. 29 uh, the three of us are really three faces of blind golf that will be there for decades to come. And that's what's really cool about it. And, and they're all amazing individuals. So to have folks that you're competing against, but also... So you can be friends with them. Even absolutely. though you're competing with them, 
you could, it's like, hey, who's ever, especially with golf, yeah. whoever's hot is hot. You Absolutely. Know, you know, ball's going to go in the hole or not go in the hole. Absolutely. I think there's, there's a respect aspect to golf where I'm going to play my best. I'm going to try to win. And if I don't, uh, if my competitor does yeah. better, hey, uh, hats off to them. So, Leo, from your perspective, what have been, what's been one of your favorite moments of this journey with your son? I mean, the, the first win in 2010 was unbelievable. It was totally unexpected. Like you said, nobody knew who yes. we were. And uh, to win that one was unbelievable. Now, you know, six years later to going back to the winning, uh, you know, winner circles, it was pretty, pretty sweet as well. So there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of small tournaments. Even in smaller tournaments, we had some great, great, great time. Yes. And, and, you know, now we know, we know most of the people there and they're from all over the world. It's a very, very nice group of people. So What did you learn about your son that you didn't know until you guys started traveling together? Uh, he's a, he's a, he's very competitive, uh, <laughs> but not to an extreme. I mean, he, he's and he's pretty cool, uh, even tempered on the golf course, which is good. So he, are, he's you, under are pressure. you even tempered on the golf course too? Yeah, yeah, I'm pre we're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got the pressure. I mean, I got the pressure to give him the line, but he's got the pressure to hit the shot. So, so. obviously, you called that line when that chip went in. That was yes, all you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no. Well, that was, that was only for the line. That was in for the, the shot. That's all in execution. I'll take credit you for it. You take credit That's for it. Right. I love it. It is a team. Who knew golf absolutely. was a team sport? Exactly. Right. I want to share something else, yes. too. We actually brought this. Uh, you get a green jacket for winning oh. the Masters at Augusta on the PGA Tour. They gave us a green kimono for oh winning the World Championship God. in Japan. I love that. So that's pretty, pretty darn awesome. You we might got have to put that kimono. on for us. <laughs> Don't yeah, you think? I, can, I can model it for yeah, you. Let's have, I'll here, I'll, yeah, let's have Jerry. Give Dad the mic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to model the kimono. Geff, can you get the green kimono? Green kimono. Oh, my God. Let's there see. Go. How often? <laughs> and to help out other athletes like Jeremy get his green kimono, Jeremy points to know, and Leo. Yeah. To know. Thank you guys for, for doing for everything you're doing for CAF and so many people out there are understanding, well, wait a second, my life's not over. Right. I've got this challenge, but I could get a green kimono. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Bob, and thanks to everybody out there helping out because it really makes a big impact in our lives and not just myself, thousands, thousands of athletes around the world. It makes a huge impact and some of us get deeper relationships with our with our dad through the experience <laughs> as well. I love it. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank I appreciate you. it.